Hello, I'm Jake. I'm Eliza, and you're watching Horse Rockets. Episode 5, Homeschool Equals Traveling School. Well, take time, do what you're gonna do, and just smile, you are gonna see it through. Your wings are gonna sprout and lift you off the ground, no, oh, no. Take time, do what you're gonna do, just smile, you're gonna see it through. In this episode, we're going to talk about how a homeschool can be a traveling school. But before we start this episode, we want to say thank you to our audience. There are more than 1.5 million homeschoolers out there, and a few of them have started to watch the show. We think you're the best, and we'd like to hear from you. Go ahead and use the comments section on YouTube. If you like our show, don't be shy about using the thumbs up. Now it's time for the news. <laughs> Hello, in this episode, we have two stories for you. The first comes from the state of Alabama. Homeschoolers in Huntsville killed the myth that homeschoolers aren't socialized by putting their attire and bringing their best dance moves to the 2014 homeschooling prom held at the Huntsville Museum of Art. In the next story, we're talking about the Florida House. The Florida House of Representatives passed a bill that lets homeschoolers participate in public school sports. The law still has to pass the Florida Senate, but shows steps towards proof providing students and parents to freedom over their education and their future. If you like to learn more about either of these two stories, check out the show notes below the video. One of the potential drawbacks of a public education is that week after week of learning in a fixed building tends to leave the impression that learning can only happen in one of those buildings. That's not to say the teachers aren't trying or the field trips don't help. We know some excellent teachers who truly inspire their students. But even with their best efforts, there is an institutionalizing process at work, and it's a process that can have less influence for homeschoolers. The word homeschooling can be misleading. There's a lot to learn inside and outside of the home. Recently, our school has been on location in Krakow and Prague. Vacations are still fun because learning doesn't have to be painful. In addition to that, when we return from trips, our assignments change to help the kids pull the learning moments out of the experiences. You don't have to go to exotic places to have a learning experience. One technique is just to say key questions and experience you are having. You'll notice in this episode we only ask three questions, but we repeat them and pull out new information each time. What did we do on our first day of traveling? Our first day was a traveling day. We got in the car early in the morning, drove towards Krakow, stopped to do some Polish pottery shopping, and have lunch. What did we learn from it? So some of the things we learned from it was the adjusting to a different culture, adjusting to a different language and uh, being able to try new things once again. Uh, the people that we were around have been living this way their whole lives, and it was our job as guests in their culture to try to understand it as best we could and appreciate it. Does it help us to live better lives and be better people? Well, it does, because when you're in another culture and doing those sorts of things, what you're really doing is you're learning how to show respect for other people's differences. Um, and that's an important thing to have as you grow up, uh, especially as your job and life is going to have you working in a lot of different places. All right, my turn. What did we do on the second day? On the second day, we went to a salt mine, which is pretty cool. Okay, what did we learn from it? We learned that miners have been digging salt there for over years. A hundred years, maybe, right? It's several hundred years. Several hundred years. They had hor they had many things. They had horses that were di that were born down there. That horses that grew up there and never saw the sunlight. 
They had many interesting facts, but my favorite thing about it was that I got to lick the walls. Okay, minus licking the walls, how does this help us live better lives and be better people? Well, we got to see what the people did before that became a, like a museum and stuff. That it was kind of cool seeing how seeing how people used to have it, and they still have these old equipment that they used to have. They told us everything that was there and what it was like. So it's better, it's interesting to learn how people had it back then and then now today, how it's easier with our technology than theirs. Dad, what did we do on our third day? So on our third day, we took a guided tour uh, via a golf cart around the city. We made two major stops. Uh, and then in the afternoon, in the evening, uh, Chrissy and I took the opportunity to head out and uh, met with a genealogist as well as uh, take pictures of the evening. What did we learn from it, Dad? So we learned an awful lot from it. Krakow has a history that has not been erased by modernizing their city. Uh, they do believe in preserving it. So some of the buildings we were looking at were the same way they had looked in the 1930s. Uh, there's a great deal of history, uh, sad history, and also very, um, very positive history in that city. Uh, the sad history, a lot of it deals with uh, Nazism and World War II, but also they take great pride uh, by having, uh, you know, Pope John Paul come from that city and having studied there and learned uh, there. Um, it was a great, uh, great thing to see and participate in. How does that help us live better lives, Dad? So this helps us live better lives and be better people um, in many ways because it's very humbling uh, to realize how blessed we are uh, for the circumstances that we do have uh, and to appreciate the trials and overcoming, uh, the stories of overcoming that we have from different cultures. So Eliza, what did we do on our fourth day? Well, we went from Krakow to Prague. Mm -hmm. And on the way, we found a gravesite, and we found a hotel, and we had a hotel incident. Okay, what did we learn from those experiences? The gravesite, we learned that some of our rel my mom's relatives could still be alive today, and they could be Czech. Okay. The hotel incident, never trust the internet. Okay. So how, do, how does this help us live better lives and be better people? Well, for the gravesite, we now know that some of mom's relatives are still there and it's easier for us. They might have some more family history about than we do, so we can just go to them if they speak a little English and see what they know. For the hotel incident, always trust your girl. Always trust your grandparents and be calm in if, a, if a plan fails or something. That's what my dad learned. Anyways, Dad, what did we do on our fifth day? So our fifth day was our final day. We took our trip from Prague back home. Before we left Prague, we did a little sightseeing. What did we learn from it? Well, you know, because this trip involved uh, my parents, we had to manage different personalities and expectations. Once the group grows from our normal family unit to be larger, it's very interesting how some of the dynamics and people's interests change. Uh, there were Easter markets in downtown Prague. And Which a lot are kind of cool. Yeah, a lot of things to see. And so we had to learn to manage and give people the space they needed to be able to explore what they were interested in and yet still feel part of the group. Uh, when we got home, we quickly unloaded the car and had a good unpacking and were able to, to carry on with the rest of our lives. How did we, how does this help us live better lives and be better people? So part of living better lives and being better people, again, is respect for others and giving them their space, but also giving people a sense of connectedness that allows us to feel part of a unit that we can rely on when times get tough. There's a few other things we want to cover because this was a really fun trip. And Liza and I definitely want to share some of the, the things that we didn't have questions for. So Liza, food. Uh, what were some of your favorite memories with the food in Poland and Czech? Well, on our way to Poland, uh -huh. 
we, there was this restaurant called the Blue Beat. It was awesome and amazing. They had a barn behind the restaurant. They had a hotel on top of it. This place was really old, yet it looked so new. And they've done a great job restoring it. There's a great history when you're sitting there. And they tell you about the history of the building and, and how it's you know over 100 years old, I believe it was, and it just really, really neat. Um, so what about the way societies were organized? Were there any other cool things that you noticed? Like, what time of day did they eat? Well, they ate around 1. They ate around 1.30. Uh-huh. So, if you're American and you want to go to Blue Beat, get there at 1 when it's less busy. You know, and that was true when we went to Krakow as well. It seems like the meal time was a little later in the day than what we were used to. Uh, is that bad? No. It's just something we had to adjust to uh, while we were staying there. Also, if you're going to McDonald's, that means there are more, that means the breakfast menu will still be up. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. You know, we did have to stop when we were in Prague. Um, you know, it was four days or so into the trip, and we needed some comfort food, and McDonald's was able to provide it. Now, they don't sponsor this show, but I'm still amazed at how versatile that corporation is at providing a product and service uh, to as many people as they do on a daily basis. And our family definitely appreciated being able to pull up and grab some French fries and let the kids run around the playhouse. Because after, what was it, three days in the car on a four-day trip so far, they really needed that. Well, also, in America, they don't have as much French fries as they do here. So I'm like, Mom, they have so much French fries. Why don't they have this much in America. Yeah, they haven't changed the French fry oil over here, um, and so it tastes like the original McDonald's French fries that you guys are missing back in the States. Sorry. My grandma, when she tried it, since she was over for a while, she's like, this is better than American French fries. Also, when we were there, we found out that McDonald's, instead of drive through they have a walk-through. Right, because most of the people in Prague walk. uh, are walking on the sidewalk. So instead of having a drive through they have a walk through You walk on up to the outside, right, just like you would a drive through and boom, there you go. You can order what you want. We're not trying to be offensive if you're taking the car and you're used to going drive through yeah, again, to McDonald's. A very versatile corporation is able to do a lot. Now it's time for Horse Rockets High Five! In this part of the show, we share something that we've found that's worthy of the grand status of high five The week, The week's high five goes out to the folks smarter every day, and their video explain the physics behind cats landing on their feet. The video is just over six minutes and definitely worth of our, worthy of your time. To the folks at Smarter Every Day, you have been found worthy of the high five. This episode is produced in part by the viewers like you. No, we don't ask for a donation. We just ask you to click on our Amazon link the next time you go shopping online. The little click will tag your shopping session so a percentage of what you purchase gets donated to the show. Unless you're the sort of person that reads URLs religiously, you shouldn't notice. It doesn't add a cent to your shopping experience. Thanks for joining us. Now dance off. So take a look at this. A white block of what I'm on? A sticky summer's day in Shepherd's Town. An eagle in a thermal is a circle. Now I can tie.